A few years ago, when Governor Cuomo wanted to bring a project to central New York, his first pitch was for a stadium, a sports stadium for Syracuse University. The current mayor, Stephanie Miner, resisted, and that led to another project, the amphitheater, being built outside of the city. If you had been mayor at the time, would you have supported that stadium? Why or why not? I certainly would have continued talking about it. It seemed the mayor just dismissed it, saying, why didn't you talk to me first? She had legitimate questions, I think, you know, with I-81 coming down, hopefully, I want the community grid there. Uh, there were questions about traffic and wonder, how did it fit into the city's overall plan, but she just seemed to dismiss it out of hand. I wouldn't have done that because there was a lot of investment. We've had $120 million invested around the county fair and nothing in, in Syracuse from the state. And we, you know, our poverty is growing. You know, high poverty census tracts have quadrupled since 2000. And uh, I think we need to get investment in the city. So I definitely would have, you know, pursued that. Right now, Buffalo and Rochester are working together to try to get Amazon to build another headquarters in that region. It's a project that could potentially bring thousands of jobs to that area. Where do you see possible partnerships that could be formed to bring more jobs here to our area? Right here in Syracuse, we should build on what we have. Our anchor institutions are the Eds and Meds, so-called the hospital, hospitals and Syracuse University on University Hill. And I want to bring here a model they have in Cleveland. It's called the Evergreen Co-ops. The Eds and Meds provide long-term capital and markets for worker co-ops that then sell what those Eds and Meds need. One thing they did in Cleveland was an industrial laundry. We now have coin laundry sitting abandoned on the south side. And they provide linens for the hospitals. They have an urban farm that provides fresh produce for the food services at the hospitals and universities. We could do that. They have a solar panel manufacturing and installation firm. We could do that. And I think we could create jobs right there with the capital we already have. Unfortunately, one of the first things that Amazon lists on their uh, list of what we need is fiber, high-speed fiber optics. And we don't have that because the telecoms that have been serving Syracuse haven't built it. Verizon was going to build it out. They stopped after hitting some of the affluent neighborhoods. So I think another thing we need to do is get public ownership of our public utilities to lower the cost of living and doing business in the city. That means public power and community broadway. If elected mayor, during your first year on the job, you will deal with a budget gap. Will you propose raising property taxes? That'd be the last resort. I've proposed that we have a local income tax that's graduated. So if you're under 25000 a year, you wouldn't pay anything. And then twenty five to 50 you might pay a half a percent, over 100000 a percent and a half. And it would include commuters and absentee landlords as well as residents. With a $2.8 billion city payroll, that would raise $28 million. The structural deficit is about 15 to 20 million dollars. That right there would cover the deficit without having to raise property taxes. If we can get revenue sharing restored from the state, it's now one half of one percent. It used to be eight percent of state revenues. If we could just get it to one percent, there'd be another 70 million. If we got those two reforms, we could cut property taxes. When young families consider moving into the city, they look at the schools. Last year, the graduation rate was almost 61 percent. While the graduation rate is up in Syracuse, it is still behind the state average. If elected mayor, how hands-on do you plan on being in the school districts? I'll be an advocate for the schools. First of all, if you have good parental support and you're a child going in our schools, you can go as far as your efforts will take you. We have good schools, good teachers. The problem is we have concentrated poverty in high-poverty schools. That's where you get lower standardized tests. That's where you get problems on the street coming into the schools. So my approach is to change the conditions around the schools by attacking poverty. And we've got to desegregate. Martin Luther King came here in 1965, told Syracuse, we're getting rid of Jim Crow segregation in the South. You have de facto segregation in the North. And if you don't deal with that, you're going to lose generations of children. And we have for the last 50 years. So we've got to begin to desegregate by race and economic class. What do you see as the biggest issues keeping young families from moving into Syracuse, and what will you do to address that? Schools, you know, they want the kids to go to good schools, and the perception is that the Syracuse schools are not good. We've got to deal with that perception. And then opportunities, you know, economic opportunities. We rank last among 100 cities in the nation in economic growth. So we've got to uh, get the economy going, and we've been doing trickle down, and it hasn't trickled down or trickled out to our high poverty neighborhoods, which have grown. I want to direct city resources and policies to uplifting poor and working class people so that the neighborhoods come up and anywhere in the city is a good place to live. 
with talks of consolidating services between Syracuse and Onondaga County, where do you see three areas that could benefit taxpayers from sharing? I think sharing property taxes like they have in the St. Paul, Minneapolis area since 1971. What that does is make development anywhere in the county benefit taxpayers everywhere. So they're, we're not competing with each other with tax breaks and whatnot and spreading sprawl. So that's number one. Water. Uh, the two county agencies merged. The city hasn't. And we've got the biggest problems. We've got wooden pipes and brick pipes, you know, still carrying the water. we got water mains breaking. Um, and then there were 50 different recommendations. I think they're all worth looking at in the shared services. What I'm concerned is that we need a governing structure so those services are responsive to the people in the city. The consensus proposal was terrible for the city. It would have consolidated like we have in the county legislature. The suburban rural majority would steamroll the uh, city minority in legislation. We need a uh, metropolitan government that's based on proportional representation in that legislative body. And we need to federate the cities and towns instead of make them disappear and just have one centralized government. And then we can have good governance of shared services. Give an example of a program that is working so well in Syracuse that you would like to see it expand. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is a good idea that hasn't been enforced, and that's the Equal Employment Opportunity Program, a 1973 ordinance uh, to monitor hiring of minorities on contracts. When the data was reported by the Human Rights Commission between 2004 and 2008, minorities were getting one-fifth of their proportionate share of those jobs. I want to overhaul that program, have it extend to the city departments, and make sure that city residents and minorities are getting their fair share of city jobs. That's a good idea, a good program, but it just hasn't been monitored or enforced. Give an example of a program that is working well in another city you would like to bring it to Syracuse. Uh, the Richmond model of community policing and reaching out to the disconnected youth. All crime in the city has been going down except shootings by youth. We ranked sixth in the nation since 2014 in teenagers injured or killed by gunfire. And that's where the problem is. And we need outreach workers to connect to those kids, get them reconnected to education or jobs or whatever kind of service they need to get straight. And then we need the police officers in the community. Every officer ought to be assigned to a neighborhood, get to know the people, the businesses, and help solve problems and de-escalate conflicts before they get worse. In Richmond, they lowered the homicide rate by 75% and the property crimes rate by 40% over the eight-year term, and this was done under a Green mayor. So, you know, Greens can win office and get elected to mayor. Looking ahead 20 years from now, how will the decision on 81 have reshaped the city and the area around it? Well, if we do it the way I would like, we would have a community grid that's mixed income, mixed use, ecologically designed, serviced by public transportation. It would be a model of modern urban design, compact development. It'd be a walkable neighborhood. It'd be a model everybody around the country would be emulating. I asked someone who does not live in Syracuse, what issue is most important to you as someone who does not live in the city? Her response was downtown parking and finding parking. What do you think about the parking options and what do you think needs to be done to make Syracuse more attractive for people who are visiting? We need better public transportation. I remember when Joni Mahoney ran for uh, county executive the first time, she said we ought to have park and ride with, you know, bus rapid transit in the suburbs. I don't know why the idea wasn't implemented. Uh, there's light rail proposed for the redevelopment of the 27 square block area south of Adams when the interstate is, is redone in the public housing area and they have light rail as part of their proposal. I think we need to build upon that. And so people can come to town, they park out, you know, if they live in the suburbs, and get on uh, convenient, affordable, rapid transit, and do what they want to do in the city and get back home. And, and it's much more convenient than finding a parking spot in the city. And, you know, too much of the city is taken up by parking lots and parking spaces. And the advantages of the city are because we're all compact, things are close, People are interacting, it's lively. You want to maximize that and not have it uh, distorted uh, by cars. So rapid transit, I think that's what we need to work on. Opiate abuse and heroin is a growing problem that spills into other areas. For example, it can lead to increased crime. Some mayors support safe spaces where people can use heroin legally. Would you support that? What do you think, if anything, the city can do to help people who are addicted? Uh, well, first thing you want to do is stop people from ODing and maybe dying. 
And so the safe injection sites is one way. There should be medical services and addiction treatment offered to the addicts when they come in to get treatment, but at least they can get treatment without killing themselves. I mean, get their fix without killing themselves. One of the ERs in upstate is, I think it's upstate, is uh, providing uh, those services right in the ER. That needs to be at all the hospitals. Um, so that's the first thing, prevent harm. And then we've got to have the availability of addiction treatment. People have to wait, and while they're waiting, they go back out on the street and get high, and they maybe die. And so I think what we need in the state, we're one vote away in the state Senate, is a single-payer universal health care system. And actually, that's another reform that would save us money. 8% payroll tax on average for the city payroll would be about a third of what we're paying for insurance premiums. It would save the city $42 million and the school district $38 million. And we'd have addiction treatment for everybody that needed it. The current mayor is not afraid to go and challenge people in her own party. She has publicly questioned the governor. Give us an example of when you have gone against your own party or team for what you believe was the greater good. Uh, I had I told Jill Stein she shouldn't go to Russia. She was also offered to, to go to Syria with Assad, and she took my advice on that. Uh, and now there's that famous picture of their, her there with Putin and uh, General Flynn. And you know what she said there? She was critical of both the United States and and and, and Russia in terms of Middle East policy and other foreign policy and nuclear weapons. But the picture, and, and that's what we told her. Me and another guy that was on the call cons consulting with her that. You know, you get a picture there with Putin, and it's it's going to speak louder than anything you say. So, you know, I spoke against our presidential candidate. Unfortunately, she didn't take my advice. Crime cameras. There have been more added over the years. Do you feel they are working, and are there enough? Well, they work in the sense that uh, the criminal activity moves out of camera view, but it just moves down the block. So uh, they are a deterrent when you want to get crime off a particular spot. But to deal with the crime, we got to deal with the poverty, and we got to reach out to these disconnected youth who are sh doing the shootings. And uh, that's the worst crime problem we've got. Lightning round. Are there enough police officers in Syracuse, yes or no? No, but I don't think we have the money to hire them at this point. As mayor, would you add more police officers, yes or no? If we had the money, I would consider it. I want to review the staffing with uh, the, the police chief that I'm working with and want to incorporate community policing. So, uh, you know, I'm not saying whatever happens, I'm going to hire more officers because we don't have the money. The tax deal with developers of Destiny USA, helping or hurting Syracuse? Hurting. Conjo isn't paying property taxes till 2035. Out of these two issues, which would you tackle first, aging infrastructure or bringing more conferences to the city? Well, I get on top of aging infrastructure, get a plan, and uh, that's more long-term conferences are up the What is your favorite neighborhood in Syracuse? South side where I live. Finally, I am a homeowner who proudly lives in the city of Syracuse. Of course, I will be voting on election day, and like many others, I am undecided. Make your final pitch as to why I should vote for you. I want to be the next mayor of Syracuse, not its last mayor. And if we don't find the finances, we may have a state financial control board doing our budget for us. They could even recommend that we dissolve into the county. They'll tear up the municipal employee contracts. Uh, we lose control of our city. So my top priority are these progressive tax reforms I've talked about. And my general approach is instead of trickle down, which hasn't trickled down and out to the neighborhoods, we need to focus our resources and policies on uplifting poor and working class people. That will reduce the crime. That will improve the school performances. And then middle class people and businesses will find Syracuse an attractive place and we can all prosper together.